Uh, let's go to God in prayer as we open up our time together. God, again, we thank you for the day. Uh, it's a beautiful day because it's been granted to us by your grace. Uh, we know that not every day is guaranteed to us, um, but we are grateful for this one. And pray that, that even in this day, your day will be used for your glory and for your honor. Uh, we're mindful of the fact that Jesus came so far to redeem us, and I pray that our lives would reflect that sacrifice. We're grateful and humble at the fact that you care for us so deeply and so richly that even in times where we are a bit anxious and maybe living with a little bit of fear, and sometimes a lot of fear, that you are present and you are faithful. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for who you call us to be as your people. And God, as we leave this place, I pray that we would be mindful of you, mindful of, of, of what you have called us to be as Christians, and, and the lives that we live in faith would be a reflection of, of the true faith that we do have in you. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. No, I found two weeks ago. And uh, following, following God's ways, if, if you are going to be a Christian, if you have claimed that title and that space in God's people as a Christian, following God's ways will lead you through uh, some, some crazy times. It will lead you through highs and lows, peaks and valleys. There are all kinds of, of experiences that, that, that following God will take you through. Um, being people who are living according to His will, it's not a straight line. You know, we'd like to think and we'd like to hope, maybe, that once we decide to follow God, that we can just then make a beeline to heaven. And everything that we need along the way, we can pick up, we can do, we can act in this straight line, straight path. But that's just not the case, is it? You know, following God's will is a lot like following the GPS system. That there are twists and there are turns, and sometimes you have to take back roads. Sometimes you find yourself in, in traffic or in an accident, and you find yourself with delays, and maybe you make a wrong turn. Uh, I remember taking a trip up to Cloudcroft, New Mexico. I was a Boy Scout, um, a Tenderfoot Boy Scout. And in order to get one of my merit badges, I had to be a navigator on one of our trips. And, and for those of you who are younger, um, well, probably me and younger, Maybe you've never had to use a map before. Not, not, a, not a map app on your phone, but an actual physical map. Yes, they actually do print maps, and they have every road that you can imagine, side road, little road, county road, dirt road, they're all there, and they're all labeled. And, and before our GPS systems, you actually had to pick where you were starting from and where you were going, and you had to follow signs and follow this map on paper. And one of the things I had to do is we were going to a family retreat it was about an eight-hour trip from Austin to Cloudcroft, if I remember correctly. It was probably longer than that, now that I think about the mileage there. Um, but I had to navigate my way along here. You know what? Sometimes we took wrong turns. Thankfully, my dad knew how to get there. And so my act of navigation was only confirmed by the fact that he knew exactly what roads we needed to take. He had already mapped it out. And so I would say, uh, we need to take a left up here on highway whatever. And he was like, are you sure? And of course, I was sure because, you know, I was a young boy. And of course, I know everything. I've got the map, right? But if you take a wrong turn, you realize you've got to turn around and get back to the path. That's the way it is in following God's ways. And I want to start with this truth, okay? And again, we, we started this way for the last few weeks. And really, because of the setting we are in, I think it's a good way to start. That is, if you take nothing else from this message today, I want you to take this away. As Christians, we have a covenant with God, and we can believe in His promise, promises even in the worst of times. That as Christians, that we can believe in God, no matter what is going on, highs, lows, um, the next one. That we can believe in God no matter what is going on, the best of times, in the worst of times. God is the one thing that we can anchor in. We're going to look at the story of Abraham today, right? The story of Abraham is one that we are familiar with. Um, Genesis chapter 12 begins the story of Abraham. Um, the Lord says, Abraham, go out from your land, your relatives and your father's house, to the land that I will show you. 
So Abraham is the beginning of the Hebrew people. He's the beginning of the nation of Israel. And ultimately, he is the beginning of the church because he is a human ancestor to the Messiah. Romans chapter 4 and verse 16 um, Paul writes this, this is why the promise is by faith, so that it may become, so that, so that it may be according to grace, to guarantee it to all the descendants, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of Abraham's faith. He is the father of us all. And so if you remember how Abraham's story begins, Abraham begins with this call from God to go. Um, I don't know if you've ever experienced a calling like that. But, you know, he lives in the land of Ur, and, and God says, look, I want you to go west. In Genesis chapter 11 and verse 31, he tells Abraham to go west. And, and if you know anything about Ur, Ur is the New York City of the counties, right? Um, it is the economic hub. Everything revolves around Ur. It's the place to be at the time. But Abraham had faith in this call from God, and he left everything he knew to go to a new place. Now, for many of you, leaving New York City and going out into the country would be no problem at all. Uh, maybe the problem for some of you would be the other way around. You're living out in the country isolated, and God says, I want you to go to New York City. Right? Whatever it was, this was a great change for Abraham. Here's the thing that, that we, I think, often miss about Abraham. He didn't have any scriptures to memorize. Like, he didn't have a scroll to roll back through and say, you know what, God is good. Look how good he has been. Look at all the stories that we can tell about what God has done. Abraham simply had to fall from God, and he left. Can you imagine leaving everything you know and going out to a new place? Now, imagine you don't have a destination yet. God just told Abraham, I want you to go, and I'll tell you when you have arrived home. That, my friends, is probably not going to fly very well in my house, right? If a, if a moving truck showed up in our driveway one day and we started loading up, and, you know, my wife comes home from school or wherever she's been and says, hey, what's going on? I say, babe, we're moving. I, what do you mean we're moving? I got a voice. Somebody told me to go. Where are we moving to? I don't know yet. That voice is going to tell us when we get there. My family needs a little more security than that. I'm thankful that any time God has called me to a place, there has actually been a destination to go to. Abraham didn't have that. He didn't have all those experiences. God says, Abraham, I want you to go. And so Abraham picks up his family, his belongings, and everything, and sets out west. He says, I'll tell you when you are home. Here's the thing about the Christian life. It's not always the upgrade that we are looking for. But it is always the upgrade we are longing for. But I don't want you to think about that for a moment. Think about all the things that we upgrade. Right? We've been dealing with Jody's phone here lately. Um, it is old, right? It's not that old. It's only four years old. But as far as technology goes, that is ancient, right? And, and as far as Apple goes, that's about the time where nothing begins working with anything new they're putting out. Um, the, cameras, the cameras are messed up. The, the battery was not staying charged. She couldn't, she couldn't even keep it charged half the time. So, you know, it's just like, you know what? I need a new phone. I've been there. I love new phones. I love new computers. For a while, we used to lease cars from Saturn until we realized we couldn't lease cars because we drove too much. Right? But the thing with the lease is, what you know is every three years, you have a new car. You get the latest technology. You get the latest style. And you get new leather and, and new paint, all of those things, you get an upgrade. Who in the world goes and takes a, a two or three year car in and trades it in on a 45 year old jalopy? Not a classic, but a rust bucket that's beat up and doesn't hardly run. Right? We don't do that. Abraham wasn't seeking for this kind of an upgrade, but what God knew is God knew the rest of the story. He knew the big picture of the story. He said, Abraham, you may not think this is an upgrade that you want, but when you get there, you're going to realize that I'm going to do something so powerful in you, so powerful through you, that you will wonder why you ever even resisted following me. This may not be the life that you were looking for, but Abraham, I promise you, this is the life 
that you are longing for. And, and, and sometimes, brothers and sisters, sometimes God calls us to a place and He just wants us to say, whatever you want, God, I am with you. I am in for you. Because the truth is, most of the time, God doesn't call us to a place that is super comfortable, that is super convenient. But He calls us to a place that requires us to sacrifice, that calls us to give things up that we are clinging so tightly to. And what God really says is, if you will just trust me, if you will just trust me to get you through this space, I will do something so marvelous in you that you can't even imagine that. There is something powerful waiting for you on the other end of my leaving. And if you will put your own desires, your own fears, your own anxieties away and just do what I'm asking you to do, I'll show you when we get there that this is what you have been missing all along. And, and I know that's true because he does it over and over and over again. Between the two covers of what we call scripture, we see the stories of the way God continues to show up. Abraham's relationship with God was an upgrade. He didn't know it was an upgrade. He didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know what was in store for him. But what he did know was if God says it, it is so. If God says it, it will be. And even though he couldn't physically see the progress of what God was doing, many times we can't see the progress of what God is doing. And sometimes when God moves in our lives, it can seem like we aren't getting an upgrade at all. But that's just because we are seeing one part of the story. Later on in the story of Abraham, we see that God promises him that he will have a son. And the remarkable thing about this is Abraham is old and his wife is old. And not only is his wife old, she's barren. She can't have children. And, and so it wasn't it's bad enough that she was barren, but now she's almost 100 years old. And God says, you're going to have a son. And God says, you will give me another wife. And he says, no. Your wife is going to bear you a son. And you will be the father of many nations. Genesis chapter 17 and in verse 4. God says to Abraham, as for me, my covenant is with you, and you will become the father of many nations. Covenant is a very important part of, of the Bible, Scripture. Covenant goes beyond the contract that binds two people, and in this relationship with Christ, it binds us together in blood. It's an agreement here between God and between mankind in which God pledges to bless those who accept and commit themselves to Him. God's promise to Abraham becomes a promise to redeem the whole world through His family, through His human descendant, that is Jesus. And God also makes a covenant with all of mankind through the cross for redemption, for salvation. Right. This is the way God's come to birth with his people. Mark chapter 14, verses 23 and 24. Then he, Jesus, took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them. And so they all drank from it, and he said to them, This is my blood that establishes the covenant. It is shed for many. We're living in a world that just doesn't make sense right now. When things don't make sense, we rely on God's covenant and on His presence. That is something that we can anchor in. That is something that we can know is true and is sure. Right, there's a couple of, of memes that come out. There's actually a, a t-shirt that uh, is coming out here. And it's, a, it's a picture of Jesus, right? And uh, it's, it's a, a it's, it's a picture, picture of Jesus. He's got a thumbs up, and he says, "BRB." Um, I don't own the T-shirt, but I look at it and I think, man, that's that's kind of humorous, right? When you think about, it, really, that's essentially what Jesus said when he left. And it's, "I'll be right back." Uh, maybe you think of it more as as the Terminator, right? When the Terminator turns and he says, "I'll be back." You know, we, we, we understand what that means. He, he's coming back. 
Jesus has promised that he is going to come back. And in one sense, he's coming back to take us home. But really, truly, he never really left. Because what he told us in John is that I'm going to leave this. And the reason I'm going to leave is because I can't leave the piece of me that you really, truly need. Until I do leave, because once I leave and go, the Father is going to send the Spirit to dwell within you. And the Spirit is going to be powerful and marvelous things in you, but He can't do it until I go. And so I'm going to go, but I'm going to be home. And I'm going to be back to take you home. I think about those times when my mother and father used to leave me with a babysitter when they would go out on their Friday night days. Sometimes it was a, a girl from the neighborhood. Sometimes it was a friend of, of my mom and dad's. But you know, when my mom and dad left to go on their day, I always knew they were coming home. I always knew they were coming back to make things right again. That, that even though we had great fun when mom and dad were gone with our babysitters, nothing was the same. There's something special about having mom and dad there home with us. Heather used to babysit children uh, while I was in school. She had a lot of those. And, you know, the, most of them were so happy to see their parents come back and pick them up. It was such a joy to know that even though they had a great time where they were at our house, they knew that mom was here, they knew that dad was here, and they knew that it was time to come home. You see, when things don't make sense, we rely on God's covenant and his presence and the promise that he makes that he will come and take us home because God keeps his word. He keeps his word, and he fulfills his promise. You see, like Abraham, Christians, we have to hold fast to the promises that God has made. That he has declared over our lives that God keeps his word and he fulfills his promise. Jesus promised that he would never leave. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Promise says it is your life should be free from the love of money, be satisfied with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. We place our faith, we place our trust in God for our finances, for our health, for our relationships, for every aspect of our lives, and we walk in faith that God will guide and take care of us. Just like Abraham, we walk by faith in the journey of life. It's a long journey for some, and it's a shorter journey for others, but the life in Christ is a journey, and it's not without its twists and turns. At times it is uncertain. At times we make a turn wondering if we are following the right path. I've had to take detours at times to get, to get around things that I wasn't expecting to happen, and I have wondered at times, am I, in, am, am I on the right path? There have been times of anxiety, of fear, of uncertainty. Even in these last few weeks, there have been times where I've been a little anxious, a little uncertain. And even though my natural instinct is sometimes to be afraid, I know that in Christ there is no fear because he has already overcome the things that stand in my way. I pray that you will find peace in believing in Jesus this week. That you will find a joy that is anchored in his sacrifice. Redemption that comes in him and in him alone. May our praise and glory always be to him who sits on the throne forever and ever. May we take joy and peace and understand he has already overcome the things that we are battling against. And our battle is not against the things of this world. But we are fighting a spiritual battle. And may we rest in him.